We are back on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio, News Talk, 1180, 1230, KGEO, 1410, KERI. Now in Albuquerque, New Mexico on 1000 KKIM. And also now on the Internet on knookmedium.com, serving Richmond, Oakland, and the San Francisco Bay Area. Not to mention YouTube and Facebook and several other outlets. Yes, we are. We're all over the place now. We're all over the board. So what do you think of Dr. Wagesback? Interesting guy. I like him a lot. Yeah, very, yeah. very pleasant. I'm, I'm glad he was a army guy. Yeah. Well, you know, hey, listen. Unfortunately, we can't all be Marines. But what are you going to do? Thank God. We, <laughs> <laughs> we have a great guest. I've been looking forward to talking to. This gentleman is a uh, orthodontist in Florida, and uh, he's a victim of his own success. And now he's suing the federal government. Doctor Larry Kawa. Doctor Kawa, welcome to Kawa, like in Kawasaki. Doctor Kawa. Got it. <laughs> Welcome to Taking Care of Business. Thank you for having me as a guest on your show, Marty. So now you've become successful. You have just over 50 employees. What's that done for you right now? Well, it's really put me in a compromised position. I think you said it best when I've become a victim of my own success. I'm proud that, uh, knock on wood, my office has done well. Uh, I think my parents are proud that uh, the government is calling me a large business. In reality, I'm an orthodontist with one office. And if that's considered a large business, I'm honored to be thought of as such, but not honored to be penalized as such. Uh, I've gotten insurance from my staff for the last 20 years. I've always been a compassionate employer, and I treat my staff like my family. And now I'm told that it's something that the government has told me uh, that I must do. And if I don't do, now I'm going to have taxes to be paid uh, on top of it. And and they've made it that much more challenging in order for me to get insurance for my staff because now our premiums are going to be going up somewhere up to 40%. Uh, so that, which you've heard the president say, is going to save $2,500 per family. Uh, they're not in my family or in the family of anyone that I know. I think he needs to go on Johnny, uh, not Johnny Carson, on Jay Leno's show and tell that joke. <laughs> you know, well, uh, thank you. But, you, you know, uh, I, I guess in terms of jokes, we've got one behind the... Uh, the presidential desk in the Oval Office. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, I think the two of us would have to agree with that. No, I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree with that. But um, you have over fifty employees. You said. I do. That's correct. So you'll be required then to either offer health care or pay a excise tax. And the interesting th- thing about an excise tax is it's non-tax deductible. So, so it ends up well, costing that you even is more. Well, that's a non-tax deductible tax. There are so many things about the tax that I wish I could say that I understood every component of it. Uh, I, I can say that I don't think anyone understands any component, every component of it, because every component of it is not in place yet, even though the law passed almost four years ago. Well, even though the law has passed, uh, the rules keep changing. As an example, they weren't supposed to give subsidies to states that didn't have their own exchange, and they went and changed that legislation just recently. Well, the, uh, there's another thing that changed that flew under the radar that for some reason not enough people are aware of. The enrollment date changed. According to the law, October 15th of this coming year and of every year, the insurance companies are required by law to disclose to the American public what, what premiums are going to be charged in the following year. And this president has decided, even though no insurance company has asked him to, he's decided that the insurance companies need more time, and he has delayed it until November 15th, just four weeks later. But coincidentally, I think we both know what happens right in the middle, which is the midterms. And the reason that he did that was because Americans are going to get sticker shock when they see how their rates have skyrocketed because not enough young people are enrolling. So he wants to have America politically paralyzed because he doesn't want to eat his own cooking prior to the midterms. That's my thoughts. Well, one of the things that I don't think he thought out totally is that insurance companies are required to deliver the rate increase 60 days in advance of the renewal. So actually, the public is going to get information prior to the midterm. Well, it's my understanding that uh, the, the insurance companies are not allowed to disclose the premiums prior to October 15th, which is the beginning of the enrollment date. So uh, that's what I'm quite sure of. I mean, of course, you could fact check it. Uh, but even though the law says November 15th, the president said he moved it uh, October 15th. The president moved it to November 15th. Well, that can, that can also change by executive order, as anything, everything else has. Sure. Right. Sure. And that's that's kind of interesting how he's done this. I mean, he's, you know, here we have this law that passed, and he keeps on changing the law as we go. I'm surprised no one sued him for that. Well, you know, the interesting thing that you brought up is there's over 300 million people in the United States. There have now been 16 illegal waivers. And with respect to 
my other colleagues that have filed lawsuits on Ob- Obamacare, none of them, other than our suit, is on the 16 illegal waivers. It's literally one suit with one plaintiff. It's not a class action. And it's not to pat myself on the back for being that individual. It's just surprising to me that there aren't more people that are coming forward for whatever their reasons are. So tell us about, uh, we're having a conversation with Dr. Larry uh, Kawa. Uh, Kawa, yes. Kawa. And uh, tell us, Larry, how, how did you come about suing the government? Why, why are you suing them, and what are you suing them for? Well, I, in March of last year, I hired attorneys to make sure that my business was compliant with the law, because even though I didn't like the law, I'm still a law-abiding citizen. And then on July 2nd of last year, four months later, the president decided to tweet on his first day of an eight-day-long, $100 million trip to Africa, that he was going to uh, delay the employer mandate. And I can argue that it is not a delay. He actually canceled a law as a Congress of one for the year 2014. And for the president that often says, let me be clear, we've asked him to do so. And his answer is, we have the legal predicate to do it, but we're not going to disclose it until a later date. And that later date is one he won't commit to. So the question is, if you want to be clear, why wait? So I want to remind you, Article 1 of the Constitution says that our elected officials in Congress are the sole body that are, is charged to make or change laws, and Article 2 charges the president, who is not a lawmaker, with the affirmative duty to enforce the existing laws, whether he likes them or not. Executive orders are not mentioned anywhere in the Constitution. The purpose they've assumed is to enforce the existing laws, and I'll remind you that it says in Section 1513 of the Affordable Care Act that the employer mandate shall begin January 1st, 2014, which has come and gone. There is nothing you can do by executive order to better enforce that date by delaying it for a year. It's illogical and it's illegal. So who's going to who's going to challenge him on that, other than you? Uh, <laughs> just me. See the problem. You want to join me? Well, yeah, I'd love to. The prob the problem we have is that we have a the other party that should be challenging all these things, and they're sitting back on their. Uh, hands, it seems. Well, it, it surprises me, but uh, let me explain why. There's a reason, and I want to help you know enhance the awareness of your listeners, it, is that when you sue, a lot of people say, why doesn't someone just sue him? Why doesn't Congress sue him? Here's why. When you sue, you're suing under what's called the Administrative Procedure Act of 1946, and in order to bring a suit, you need to have what's called standing, which plainly put means you need to be injured. I want to remind you, the courts do not get involved in the legislative fiefdom. All they are there to do is resolve an actual individual dispute. You can't be an injured taxpayer. You have to be someone who really has a dispute. And that's under Article Three of the Constitution. So th- that means standing, or a place to stand in the courtroom. And in order to be awarded that, you need to prove it to a judge in advance of the actual trial for the case, or in our case, motion for summary judgment, which means in the absence of a dispute of the facts, you just you have the judge decide predicated upon the merits of the case. He reads over your briefings and writes an order. And uh, that's what we're expecting is going to happen. Now, Dr. Uh, Kawa, you, you said, or actually the government said that you have no standing to sue, right? Well, as of this point so far, we have not yet achieved standing, but I'll explain to you where we are with the case. On October 1st of last year, 2013, we filed our case in federal district court. Then we served lawsuits on the four defendants, which include the IRS, the commissioner of the IRS, Daniel Werfel, the Department of the Treasury, and the secretary of the Department of Treasury, Jack Lew. They then had 60 days to respond. They had a hard deadline of December 6th. Uh, for the first time in the history of the federal government, there was a default. They uh, ignored it. They didn't respond. But it, we wanted to take the high road. We did not ask for default judgment. We gave them more time. Three, three days later, they opted to then, uh, to then file, and their response was not only weak and pathetic, but entirely irrelevant. It, it suggested that I claimed that I'm injured as a taxpayer, which was not even in my initial complaint. Uh, I said that I was injured because I spent money on legal fees, which were then wasted by virtue of a government overreach or an authoritative power grab. So that's the reason that I claimed I was injured. So that brought us to December 9th. And then here we are a few short weeks later, and the, the judge has not recognized our standing and has technically dismissed the case without prejudice. Now, what that means does not mean in any way that the case is over or the case is closed. What it means is that uh, we have the opportunity to either, A, 
uh, modify our complaint. And by the way, in the context of his response, he laid out a roadmap for what he thinks would, would constitute standing. And we have it. Now, we have a choice. We can either go back to him to ask for standing, or we could bump it up a notch and go to the District Court of Appeals in the 11th Circuit in Atlanta, Georgia. So there's really three levels of court. The top, of course, is the Supreme Court. Beneath that is the DCA, the District Court of Appeals, and beneath that is District Court. So you're allowed to go to the DCA to argue your standing, and if they give you standing, and bear in mind it's a three-judge panel, you only need two of them to agree with you, if they give you standing and we're confident we're going to get it, we then bring the case back to the same judge in district court, and he will judge the case predicated upon its merits. And we have confidence in the judge. My understanding is he's a terrific judge, and we're looking forward to him basically, you know, judging the case predicated on its merits by virtue of summary judgment, not a trial, which is something that should make the administration quake in their boots because it means that there's no dispute of the facts, and the facts are 100% on our side. So basically, we submit some briefs, they submit some briefs, and if they did have a legal predicate to move the employer mandate or delay it for a year or cancel it, they would have already disclosed that, and they have made no allusion to that. Sure, at all. Now, when we come back for the break, I want to talk about the standing a little bit, okay? We'll be back. Sure. We'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.